Welcome to Dr. Ernest Simo's series on satellite communications. This tape presents the design and implementation of satellite communication systems. During the planning and design of satellite communication systems, sound engineering analysis and trade-offs are of paramount importance. They serve not only as drivers of integration program, but also as guideposts for the system operation and maintenance once the implementation effort is completed. This tape reviews and explains the key tasks and processes required to design and integrate an optimum, reliable, and cost-effective satellite communication system. The design process begins with a definition and understanding of the user's requirements. This effort involves a comprehensive analysis of the current telecommunications network, if any, and the traffic that flows through it. The inputs for this task essentially consist of the user data and guidance coupled with the design engineer's experience. The requirement definition process comprises six subtasks, namely the network topology, the required applications and service offerings, the traffic analysis, the network performance drivers, the network protocols and interfaces, and the network management needs. Let's review each of these outputs in more detail. The network topology identifies the locations to be interconnected and the network coverage area. This effort also determines the system architecture and the network connectivity. Various options, such as the star, mesh, ring, tree, or hybrid topologies, are candidate solutions. The system application subtask ascertains the service offerings supported by the network. Here, voice, data, and video requirements must be clearly defined. The traffic analysis process sizes the network capacity in terms of existing and projected traffic loading the grade of service for voice application, and response time for data services. Then, the network performance drivers must be specified in terms of the transmission quality, such as the required signal-to-noise ratio for analog systems, or the bit error rate for digital systems. The circuit or link availability is another performance driver to be clearly defined at this stage. The network protocols and interfaces to the end user devices, as well as the interfaces between various network subsystems, must be well understood. Finally, the network management subtask assesses the scope of work, defines the program schedules and milestones, identifies resources, and determines pricing. Once the user requirements are clearly understood, a feasibility study is then performed in order to generate candidate systems which best match the user's needs. These baseline models establish the system connectivity and alternative technologies. As a result of a preliminary evaluation, one baseline model is selected to represent the initial system. In a typical telecommunications network, three categories of system elements must be configured. The user entry devices, which include telephone sets, data terminal equipment, personal computers, facsimile machines, video monitors, or any device which interfaces the user to the network. The transmission system, typically including some baseband electronics such as multiplexers, demultiplexers, and coders, decoders. In addition to the baseband equipment, the system will require some IF and RF electronics, such as the modulators and demodulators, the up and down converters, the transmitters, receivers, and antennas. The third category of elements to be configured is the switching system, which provides the required network connectivity. The first output of this task is the description of the selected baseline configuration, the major subsystems and their functional capabilities, and a top-level definition of network protocols and interfaces. The second output is the description of the ground segments, the general characteristics and functional capabilities of the remote stations, the central stations, and the switching nodes. 
The third output is the description of the space segment characteristics and the functional capabilities. This effort also describes the satellite's footprint and its communications parameters, such as the EIRP, figure of merit, and frequency band of operation. The system engineering and parametric trade-offs phase are perhaps the most technical activities of the design process. Here, the detailed system parameters are defined, computed, and generated. The first subtask, the baseband subsystem definition and configuration, determines the interfaces between the user entry devices and the network. It also defines the multiplexing strategies to be used, such as frequency division multiplexing, FDM, where each primary channel is assigned a frequency slot within the transmission bandwidth, or time division multiplexing, TDM, where each channel occupies the full transmission bandwidth, but only for a short period of time. This effort also defines the coding strategy to be adopted. Forward error correction is generally used in modern satellite communication systems. The second subtask, the Intermediate Frequency Subsystem Definition, characterizes the IF subsystem and selects the modulation technique most suited for the network. Choices include frequency modulation for analog transmissions and phase shift keying for digital transmissions. Binary phase shift keying, BPSK, and the bandwidth efficient quaternary phase shift keying, QPSK, are routinely used in current satellite systems. The radio frequency subsystem definition subtask identifies the RF subsystem and the multiple access techniques most appropriate for the network. Candidate solutions include frequency division multiple access, time division multiple access, code division multiple access, and random access techniques. The system engineering effort also includes a parametric analysis which must be conducted in order to trade off the various hardware parameters. This requires a comprehensive link budget analysis. Essentially, the link budget process has two steps, the definition of the performance standard and the actual computation of the link parameters. The definition of the system performance requirement defines the network transmission standards. From the expected bit error rate, the theoretical energy per bit over noise density ratio, EB over N0, is determined. This theoretical ratio is then adjusted by the coding gain, the equipment implementation margin, and the system margin for a given availability requirement. Knowing the required EB over N0 and bit rate RB, the required carrier noise density ratio is simply the logarithmic sum of the two quantities. That is, C over N0 equals EB over N0 plus 10 log RB, where RB is the transmission rate in bits per second. The link budget calculations compute the uplink and downlink carrier to noise density ratios. These two ratios account for the free space loss and the thermal noise within the system. Other impairments include intermodulation distortion, adjacent system interference, and terrestrial system interference. The total carrier to noise density ratio is then computed and compared to the required value determined previously. If the calculated value equals or exceeds the required value, then no major trade-offs are needed since the expected performance requirements have been met or exceeded. However, if the calculated value is smaller than the required value, further trade-offs and link budget optimizations must be performed. During the system engineering phase, extensive interactions with various hardware and software vendors is recommended. This allows the system designer to stay close to the trends and costs of state-of-the-art technologies.